I don't know if you can see this, but this is how awful the plant is. It's like literally stuck to my hair and my shirt. It's, it's literally a plant from hell. Let's talk about Rosa multiflora. All right. <laughs> so when we got here to this property, we started to look at the property as a whole and what potential plants that we might need to pull because we are dealing with some invasive species here. And one of the worst invasive species that I know some of you out there could probably empathize with is multiflora rose, otherwise known as Rosa multiflora, which you have now been acquainted with. Yes, first of all, I don't, I think it's kind of hidden in plain sight because you just think like, oh, it's just a bunch of green, but then you look closer and you realize like, oh, wait a second, all of this is like one invasive species and it's taking over this entire fence or this other tree, it's like trying to engulf this other tree. Okay guys, so we are heading out and cutting down some multifloral rows. I learned the hard way because I started with some of my rubber gloves with the multifloral rows. I took out like probably one of the bigger bushes here at the ranch. Man, I got I got cut up so badly. Do you have my dad's welding gloves? Awesome. Once you get, you only have to cut it at the bottom, and you just grab the stem, and you just pull the whole thing out. And keep going. There's like a million different ways to remove multiflora rows, and I can't say that one is better than the other. Oh, I should highlight these tools because they have been so handy. So these are. Felco blades. I got a Felco lopper and a Felco blade. This is actually Saunders favorite tool in the whole world. <laughs> Those loppers are pretty much my to my favorite tool because I like to use the loppers before I saw the entire thing off. But these two things. Light. Incredibly light. Yeah. Like, uh, barely anything. Yeah, they're super powerful. Like cutting things. Yeah, highly, highly recommend. I mean, I'm sure there's other great brands out there that probably have to try, but. This is still smaller than that first one that I took out though. And yeah. those roots that you were working on. Yeah. You're gonna have to patty whack this one. You start to realize like, oh wow, there's so much of this on the property and then I guess we'll have to get rid of it, which is a painful process. Look at my arm. I didn't even notice. There's like a thorn in my arm. It's lodged in your arm. This is why I told you I'd yeah, give you my Yeah, I need long sleeves. Well. Just look at you. I don't know if you can see this, but this is how awful the plant is. It's like literally stuck to my hair and my shirt. It's, it's literally a plant from hell. I, I, Sandra, I think I need your help getting this plant out of my hair. Ow. Yeah. There you go. I think you did take some of my hair with it. Thank you. Okay, so let's back up before we get too far on this. And just to give you a little history for Rosa multiflora, if you're unfamiliar with it, it was basically introduced to the United States back in the 1860s as a hedge plant. And it is kind of an impenetrable hedge. As it's a great like barrier if yeah. you don't want any anyone to go on your property or any deer. Yeah. It's hard to get through it. It's yeah. impossible to get through it. So I think it was basically in the 1930s when we had some soil service people come up on our land to do a little survey and they said, oh, you know, back in the day we used to give this stuff out to farmers so that their like cattle wouldn't go out into like wild corridors and the wildlife wouldn't come into um, the cattle corridors. And it's a very effective tool for that. But as Sondra was saying, it kind of rapidly spreads. You can see that I'm just starting this massive pile. So I clipped this, now I just have to pull it out. <laughs> See this? This whole thing. And I should say that once you have multifloral rows, you always have multifloral rows. Because it's just an ever present thing in the landscape. And you have to get off every little bit and piece. So the berries, like little stems, the 
root parts of the root could actually just like propagate again. So what we really love about plants, we could really hate about plants as well, especially ones that we don't want in our landscape. So this will be a lifetime of effort, but if you cut it down and you're able to manage it with like mowing over, if you mow six, seven times a year over that root, you could exhaust the root and then it eventually will die, hopefully. Fingers crossed, I can't cross my fingers with these big gloves on. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it took a, a you know a, a longer while to realize that it was going to spread in the habitat in the way that it did. You know, this one for us is going to be full on management for the rest of our lives here. So we started to to do things that we wanted to share with you. Um, first of all, we'll share how we're actually removing this. But one of the things that we actually didn't get around to doing was we had so much of that, and also the invasive honeysuckle that we thought, well, why don't we just start mapping it out? Well, the big question is, the big big problem is that we are having is like, we're cutting all these trees down, but they're gonna come back. And when they do, you need to keep cutting them down. Otherwise, they're gonna just pro proliferate again. Proliferate, yeah. And take over. So how can we make sure that we know and keep track of where we've cut it down so we can come back to it and keep cutting it down? Yeah, and so, Basically what we did, and we're using this um, app called Map Tyler. I don't know if it's gonna be the, the right one for us, but we just started with it. Cause one of the struggles that we were having is like, how can we map this out? Like on a Google map, it's not as detailed enough, right? Yeah. So ideally what you do is we have a, we have a top down map of the place and then wherever there was a plant, you put a little dot so you know, oh, that's where a plant grew. And then you can leave a note or even a photo so you know that when you come back to it later, you can track like what was growing there. But then the problem is, is like you start looking for satellite maps and then most of them are not detailed enough to really get close to really pinpoint where that plant was growing. So what we end up doing is like, well, we need to find a way to make our own custom map first. So how we did that is we actually took a drone like this one and we just took photos from above multiple and then we stitch those together into one larger photo. And then there's an application called MapTyler and that we used to then overlay our custom map on top of Google Maps. So then you can imagine, you can just zoom in on Google Maps like you would normally do, but then as soon as you get closer to our custom photo, all of a sudden there's a lot more detail, a lot more resolution. So now you can zoom in even further and you can precisely pinpoint where that plant was growing and then leave a little dot like you've done. You've walked yeah. around the property with your phone, pinpointing where all these plants are growing and even leaving photos. Uh, yeah, I left a photo and a date and mm -hmm. you know what it actually was, whether it was the honeysuckle, which will be less likely to come back if you remove it, and then the multiflora rose, which is gonna be more likely to come back even if you remove it. And And there's other things like it'll, spread by uh, the roots, and it's very hard to get it out by the root. We were like burning, we were snipping. The, uh, the rose hips, the little berries that come on it, like birds eat those and like you know, defecate them somewhere and then all of a sudden it, it grows again in your landscape. And just because you eliminate it from your property, it doesn't mean that it's not around, it's around here everywhere. So birds will just constantly keep on bringing it in. For, so for us, we're not getting in our heads that we're going to eliminate it. We just get our heads like, and we're using some of these strategies to see if we could stay on top of it. Yeah. We had the best laid plans because I think the best time to remove multiflora rose is actually when we did because we got here on the property at the end of fall. And that's when most of the leaves off of all the plants are gone, but we could identify multiflora rose because it had this these dagger thorns yeah. and it had these like red rose hips and it's not covered in green, so it was easy for us to kind of manage to get into the plant and get a substantial amount out of the landscape. And then our best laid plans, we started to do this. I, I showed you some of the, the, the plots that we were doing on the map, but um, unfortunately, again, it, we just got hammered with snow and we didn't get a chance to go through the landscape and get them all that was really on top of our list before the snow came and the snow came 
too soon for us, unfortunately. So I think what we're gonna have to do is as soon as spring hits and the snow melts, before the green starts getting on the Rosa multiflora, it's like my goal to at least map them out mm -hmm. and maybe get them cut. So we had this huge pile of multiflora rose here and I got this flame weeder and I just set it on fire because there's snow on the ground right now. So if the fire gets out of control, it's nice to know that the entire environment is covered in a blanket of frozen water so that if something goes wrong, uh, it's not gonna catch the entire property on fire. <laughs> but, you know, the flame reader by itself is not gonna generate enough heat to keep the fire going. So what I do is I try to get the thicker stems and try to like pile up at a certain area where it's really hot and eventually it kind of takes over. And then now I got three piles going, so it's fun. Doesn't smell like smoke. These are gonna, this is gonna burn for a long time. And uh, yeah, I mean, so that's our, that's our battle with the Rose of Multiflora. I mean, to be continued for this saga. Still got the scratches on my <laughs> <Yeah>. arms. <laughs> I kept on telling Sonder, I'm like, wear long sleeves, but. Yeah, well, the sleeves get cut up. Yeah, it's true. You gotta, we, we. You need welder's welding, gloves. Welding gloves, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, so that is our saga with the Rosa Multiflora. If you have like great ways that you've been taking out of your landscape, or if you know something better than Map Tyler that you would do to, to use on waypoints, let us know in the comments because I think that will be really helpful for us. Because again, we just want to stay on top of this beast. So, all right guys, that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.